the, the spot where you get your uh, souvenirs is also the burial grounds of the person who built the Duomo, built or was the architect or the person who designed it. Uh, I mean, there are workers who built it, but you know, the person who designed the thing. I wanna say, and I could be wrong, I'll put it in here, but his name is uh, Bruschinelli or something, something that starts with a B. But I thought that was kind of, it's very interesting and it's also kind of funny that the person who built it his burial site, it's like <laughs> you go into the souvenir shop at the bottom and then it's like, oh yeah, on a side note, here's the burial grounds of the guy who designed this. It was almost like an extra thing. So um, I thought that was pretty cool as well. Good day, everyone. My name is Hannah and I am loving living and inspiring through classical music, shared experiences, travel, and lessons learned. So in today's video, I'm going to discuss eight things that you can do in Florence, Italy. So the first thing that you can do in Florence, Italy is visit all of the art museums. So I have a top three. First and foremost, you should go to the Academia. That's the one with the big David in it. That's the must-see. So that's first on your checklist. Second on the checklist is the Uffizi Gallery. This one is quite huge and it can be quite overwhelming. Um, so if, if you have a couple days, maybe plan on spending a couple hours there one day and then go back another day when you're more refreshed. This is the museum that has all of the Boricelli artwork, um, kind of like, like the Birth of Venus and um, the Primavera. So if you're interested in that type of stuff, definitely go to the Uffizi Gallery. And then the third one that I really enjoyed is um, the Bargello Museum, which is, um, it used to actually be a, a prison where they would keep uh, prisoners and they turned it into an art gallery. It's beautiful and that's where you see uh, Donatello's version of the David, the one where he's got the, the hat and it's more of like a gray, bronzish type of color. So if you're looking for that specific one, that is at the Bargello Museum. So those are my top three. There are several other museums in Florence. You should definitely check that out. And something that can uh, be beneficial to consider is a Firenze Pass. It's this red thing that you can use to get into a bunch of museums. Now, I, I want to say it includes the Uffizi Gallery and the Academia, but I could be wrong on that. So just check out, they have, if you, I'm pretty sure there's an entire website dedicated to this. I will put it somewhere in this video as well, um, where you can, you pay a certain amount of money. I want to say it's around like 60 or 70 euros, but with that, you get admission to a ton of museums in Florence, and I think you have three days to use it, 72 hours from whenever the time was that you first started your first museum. So if you're someone who really loves the art galleries or museums in general, definitely get that pass because you can um, get all the things. But if you're the, one of those people who, you know, you just kind of want to see the main things or maybe you only have like a day or two, then it might be more cost efficient to just buy your tickets ahead of time and just get like the two tickets, like the Academia and the Uffizi, but you can, I also highly, highly recommend the Bargello Museum, and it's also not as crowded, I think probably because not as many people know about it. So definitely check that out. Second thing to do in Florence, Italy is to go shopping. If you love leather, then Florence is the place to go. You can get leather jackets, you can get uh, belts, purses, jewelry, all sorts of stuff. If you are more interested in the shopping aspect, then please check out my uh, shopping in Florence video because I go over the shopping more in detail. The third thing to do in Florence, Italy is to actually go inside the Duomo. So if you've never been to Florence, that big round building in the middle of the city it's 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 glorious. I remember the first time me and my family went, 
we Florence was our first city and when we walked down the street we were kind of like you know where where are the tracks where are all of the attractions and when we were walking down when we finally came upon the Duomo it was just like whoa this is this is why we spent all of this time and money to get here because it was pretty amazing to see just from the outside so unfortunately the first time when I went with my family we didn't go on the inside honestly just because we didn't research how to get in there but I had gone again the previous um, the following year and uh, I went with someone else and we got uh, a tour to go inside it wasn't very much at all I want to say it was like 12 euros or something not much and that was, I think going inside of the Duomo is definitely worth it because you see this beautiful outside. There's just as much artwork on the inside and it's just, it's something to see. You definitely want to see what it looks like on the inside, especially in the part where the actual dome is. And another cool thing is uh, the basement area uh, is an actual... The fourth thing to do in Florence, Italy is to go to the Piazzale Michelangelo. So this is the view if you type in on TripAdvisor or if you just do any sort of research and say, what should I do if I have three days in Italy? And most of these lists are going to say to go to this Michelangelo um, Piazzale. Now, the first time I went, you got to... Um, have a good sense of direction because you just gotta you gotta keep walking past the Ponte Vecchio and I know I'm kind of butchering these Italian words but <laughs> you get what I'm saying um, you you walk past that and you just keep going and you're gonna keep going up a hill and it is the most amazing view of Florence it truly is you you gotta go there because you you can get a nice pictures of the Duomo you can see, I mean, you could see everything. You could see the Ponte Vecchio there. You can see, um, and there's, it's a, it's a nice atmosphere as well because there's a lot of, there's other tourists there, but there's couples. It's just a kind of a happy place to be and just a cool place to chill out. And I, I, I wasn't, unfortunately, the time I was there, um, I was traveling by myself and I didn't want to stay when it's dark, but I think it would be a really, really cool spot to see during sunset or sunrise that would just be spectacular so if you can do it at that time you're with someone else and you feel safe to do that then definitely see it at that time the fifth thing to do in Florence Italy is to go to the Boboli Gardens the Boboli Garden again there's another fantastic view in this area and you also are walking through this uh, it's like a little bit of a museum-ish type of feel, um, but then it, most of it is outside and there's just endless, <laughs> it almost feels like you're endlessly walking up. Me and my family, we made the mistake of um, climbing like so many flights of stairs in another uh, museum and then we did chose to do the Boboli Gardens on the same day, which um, we were all like extremely exhausted from that but it's definitely a place worth checking out it's very beautiful i know it for sure it's that one is included in that fidenze pass if you get that and um, again great picture taking opportunities it's definitely a great place to just chill out go on a walk and enjoy the view the sixth thing to do in florence italy is to go to piazza della signorina it's the uh, I'm, I'm including two things in this. So you go to the Piazza della Signorina, which has the statue of the guy holding the head. Um, and then there's the, there's a bunch of other statues right next to it. There's like this thing that, that over arches and then there's a bunch of statues underneath that. Go to that spot. There's a lot of cool statues there. But then the spot that's right next to it, the tower, I don't know if it's called the tower or what, but the tower in that piazza is really cool as well. And what I was just talking about with the Boboli Gardens, this place is the place that we are climbing so many flights of stairs in. So uh, this, the, the Medici's had a really big influence here. In another video, I talked about if, if any of you have ever seen the show, The Medici's, this building, I swear to you, the stuff in there like some of the artwork like I know for sure the um, painting of Lorenzo the Magnificent 
where he's like riding it's almost like he's doing a triumph he's riding a horse and everyone's you know like you know praising him I know for sure that was in that show and I saw that in this tower area so when you go in there again there's all sorts of stuff to see and you also have the actual long tower thing you can climb up that and that's really cool it, it, the stairs are a little bit uneven so if you don't feel like walking it is kind of a, a hike to get up there but once you're there the view again is spectacular you can get you can get pictures of the duomo that's like right there it's very up close and you can look down on you know the rest of florence it's a really cool view so definitely check that out if you're in that area the seventh thing to do in florence italy is to go to the san lorenzo marketplace so when you go there there is the really cool leather market which um i've told you about with the shopping it's good it's a place that you can see some leather or get some leather and then on the end there's a building next to it that you can go into now their hours are not all day i want to say they close sometime at midnight midday either at noon or 2 p.m something like that so if you want to see it make sure that you get there either in the morning or early afternoon there are all sorts of restaurants in there that you can try and this is the place where if you want to get a bunch of food products and um, new things to try new things to taste this is the place where you can go you can get spices gelato uh there's you know the the uh meat like salami and stuff like that all, i mean everything you can get those pretty colored pasta noodles the ones that are you know like green and red and that type of stuff cookies anything you can think of it's there it's going to be at this market the eighth thing to do in florence italy is the san marco museum it's a place where it's the place where savaranola was uh you know doing his his monk stuff i don't know if he was a monk or if he was like you know like a level above that but that was one of those places where you could literally when you walked in there you could like feel the energy of that place do you guys know what i'm talking about like if you've ever been to italy or a place that has like ancient history have you ever just felt the energy of the place this place you definitely feel it um really cool and there's also like if you walk around there there's these uh rooms that I think, I don't know if they were like, almost like the dorm rooms of the people who stayed there, or if it were like little, almost like classrooms or things like that, but really cool stuff. I remember also seeing some Renaissance time music that was written, like the actual music notes and notation. That was pretty cool to see, you know, we're, we're back when the music notes were very decorated and were like diamond shaped, you know? So you can see, uh, all that stuff in the San Marco Museum. And the ninth thing I have to do in Florence, Italy is to go to the Ponte Vecchio because in the po Ponte Vecchio uh, you have all sorts of jewelry there. You know, when I was researching going to Florence, I remember it said that you can find leather here. On, on the actual bridge, because the Ponte Vecchio means old bridge, it's just gold so if you're someone who's interested in that um you know that's a great place for it for me i wasn't so much also it's it, it is quite pricey so you got to be ready to spend on that uh if you're looking for leather go on the edges of the bridge especially like um my my favorite place i mean so far there with as far as leather where i got my leather jacket from was going away from Florence across the bridge on the left um, it's a very nice place and there I think there are a couple other leather places too so if that's what you're looking for go in the in the vicinity of it but not actually on the bridge the bridge is also a good place just for sightseeing people watching and again that could also be a great place for sunsets so those are my things to do in Florence Italy and what about you are there places specific things that you really enjoyed in Florence Italy that 
are maybe some of the things that are not so much the main tourist things to do because I know a lot of the things I said are kind of you know what you would see if it's a first time what about maybe you're a more seasoned travel or what is some of the things that you enjoy doing in there I would love to know please let me know in the comments and thank you guys so much for watching my videos I appreciate everyone who um, watches them it gives me the motivation to keep going and I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day bye